Here's a problem on sets of countably infinite order. So, I want to find a partition of the natural numbers consisting of a countably infinite number of subsets, countably infinite order. The main idea here, we could take a countably infinite number of sequences. Okay, we could thread them together to get a single sequence. We're interested in reversing that process. Now, recall, we have a partition of the natural numbers. Okay, so call it A sub n. We're going to have a collection of subsets of the natural numbers. The pairwise intersections are empty. And if we take the union over all of these subsets, we get back to the natural numbers. So we're just taking the natural numbers, carving it up into subsets. Now, for examples, if we have infinitely many subsets, okay, but we insist on finite order, we just take each of our a's to be equal to the singleton with the element n. So the union over all of these will give us the natural numbers. Pairwise intersections are going to be empty. Going in the other direction, okay, I'll have finitely many subsets, but they can have infinite order. I'll just take the odd numbers and the even numbers. So again, the union is the natural numbers. The intersection is going to be the empty set. What we want is one step beyond this. Now, how do I show that a set is countably infinite? We need to find a one-to-one -one correspondence between our set and the natural numbers. So the way we count infinite sets is using one-to-one -one correspondences. Now, in other words, I'm trying to create an infinite sequence indexed by the natural numbers such that we use every element of our set exactly once. With this idea of sequences, okay, let's see how we combine countable sets to get new countable sets. If I have a disjoint union of a finite set and a countably infinite set, okay, we take the union. So if I want to count, what I can do is we'll take the sequence that goes with the countably infinite set. Okay, we're going to shift by enough room for the finite set and then I just relabel to get a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers. So countably infinite. If we have two or more countably infinite sets, there's not enough room to shift. So instead, we're going to intertwine or interlace. So if one set consists of A's, second set consists of B's, I'll form a sequence by A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, and so on. There's enough room for every element from both sets. So again, that union is going to be countably infinite. For our case, the one step beyond. Okay, first we're just going to answer our question, and then we'll talk about sets again. So to get our partition of the natural numbers, it's going to be the same idea. We're just going to need a little bit more room. So instead of intertwining or interlacing on a line, we're going to intertwine or interlace on a grid. So we're going to have okay, this grid, say, in the third quadrant. I'm going to start out the upper left-hand corner with a 1, and then we're just going to zigzag back and forth, going through every entry in the grid. Now, we'll have each natural number occurring in exactly one row and column. If we take our A's to be the rows, then the intersection of any two A's is going to be the empty set. And we note by the construction that the union of all the a's is equal to the natural numbers. So we have a partition of the natural numbers here. Sum up, we have the partition of the natural numbers that we're looking for. Then, we could use the same process to replace the natural numbers with any countably infinite set. So it'll work for okay, the odd integers, the even integers, all integers, rational numbers, and so on. Finally, we could use the same process to show that if I have a disjoint union of a countably infinite number of countably infinite sets, the new set is going to be countably infinite also. So we just use our process from before. So for each x sub i, we take the elements, form a sequence that we'll put along each row. 
we set up the pattern as before. And that's gonna give us a new sequence going through every element from each X sub I. So this is gonna give us our one-to-one -one correspondence between our union and the natural numbers. So countably infinite. Of course, we can remove the disjoint property. And that'll just be bookkeeping that I'll leave to you.